HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost eighty grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. This show is designed to help small business owners, salespeople, and aspiring entrepreneurs master every aspect of business success. We've got a great lineup of guests and topics scheduled for you. We'll be talking about everything from sales to employee issues, from technology to social media, from work-life balance to exploring uncharted territory. Participation is welcome and encouraged. Your host, Diane Helbig, is a world-class author, speaker, and business development coach. Be sure to check out her latest book, Lemonade Stand Selling, on Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com. And now, on with the show. Well, hello, everyone. I hope things are going well where you are. I can tell you here in Cleveland, it's raining, and the wind is blowing pretty hard. It seems like it's been raining for weeks. Uh, But, you know, my grass is very, very green. So I guess that's the upside of all that. As we said, we do welcome your input. If you're in the chat room, you can type something in, and I will share it with our guest. If you're on the phone, you can press 1, and that will let me know you have something to share. Today's show is sponsored by Vision 21. Vision 21 is an entrepreneur resource center in Lakewood, Ohio. From office space rental to video conferencing to virtual assistance services, Vision 21 provides products and services to help small business owners succeed. Call 216-712-4244 to schedule a visit or go to www.vision21.org to learn more. Today's guest is Carrie Heaps. Carrie is the founder and president of Carrie's Network, a membership-based organization that provides exposure for business owners with events, a talk radio program on Blog Talk Radio, and a quarterly e-magazine called The Business Review. Carrie also owns Omega Image, an image consulting firm for men and women, and, sorry, Carrie, is this Kay Couture? Yes, it is. Okay, great. Kay Couture Cosmetics, an exclusive line of fine skin care and cosmetics. Carrie is also a contributing writer for www.divinecaroline.com, and www.womenco.com, and hosts the talk radio program with Blog Talk. Carrie has interviewed celebrities such as co-host of Shark Tank, Barbara Corcoran, author Larry Wingate, former Miss West Virginia and QVC talk show host Kim Parrish, and many more successful business entrepreneurs. Carrie's the author of Marketing Ideas That Make Sense, a marketing development book that covers networking, cold calling, establishing yourself as an expert, creating your own media, marketing ideas, and sample scripts. Carrie's volunteer efforts include helping out at the local Humane Society, contributing her time to teach college graduates resume writing and interviewing techniques, and as a survivor of domestic violence, also contributes to many domestic violence causes. It is so great to have you back on the show, Carrie. Welcome. Well, I am so happy to be here, Diane. I really appreciate you inviting me to come back on the show and just to share what I know. Oh, well, it is my pleasure. You're one of my favorite guests and one of my favorite people. Oh. And this is a great subject. So, you ready? Absolutely. Okay. So the last time you were on the show, we were talking mm-hmm. about networking. 
So I'm wondering if you wouldn't mind just doing a quick review of networking techniques. Absolutely. I would love to do that. I know the last time that we were talking, we primarily did the show just strictly about networking. And just to kind of recap some of my uh, favorite techniques and tips that I do like to share with people um, is, you know, again, Diane, we had talked about being specific in your networking efforts. And what I've been meaning to discuss about that and what we talked about before was that you want to be specific when you are asking for what you want. Uh, People can't help you unless you draw a complete picture for them, you know, what you're looking for. And the best way that you can be specific is to be able to answer a couple of quick questions about your business, about what you're looking for. And some of the ways that you can do that is you want to sit down with a pen and piece of paper and, you know, ask yourself a couple of questions, you know, um, who is a good referral for me? You know, who are my primary contacts? Who makes a good strategic partner for me? Um, you know, just all of the, the information that, you know, somebody needs to know. What kind of a situation is a potential client in for me? You know, are they filing bankruptcy? Are they getting married? You know, be really specific because when you stand up at the networking event and you are, it's your turn to talk and you have to tell 10, 20, 30 people, you know, in 30 seconds or 60 seconds or less, you know, what's a good referral for you? You want to make sure you're being as detailed as possible. Um, Some of the questions that I had talked about before were my look to your left questions. And if people go back and listen to the interview that we did before, well, there's more detail about that. But there's four, four questions that when you go to a networking function, not only do you need to be able to answer these questions if somebody asks you, but they're great questions to kind of strike up a conversation with the person that's sitting beside you. And, you know, the first and foremost, you know, how can we help you this week? What are you looking for? Um, The second one being, you know, let me tell you about my client base. You tell me which of these clients you would benefit the most from an introduction. That's a twofold question because you're automatically telling them who's a good referral for you just by describing your client base. And the third one would be who makes a good strategic partner for you. Um, you know, and is that a real estate agent or is it photographers who makes, who goes after the same type of clientele that you do, but they're not, they're providing a different or complementing product or service, not a competing one. And then lastly, you know, what types of situations are people, are businesses in that make them an ideal client for you? So again, you want to be as specific as possible, be able to answer those questions yourself And also be ready to ask other people those questions because you always want to um, offer your hand out first and be able to offer your help to the other person so they can also turn around and help you as well. Yeah, boy, it's so great. I mean, I I love all that, and I really love the, the whole concept of being very specific and really understanding, you know, who is a good client for you, what situation they're in, you know, how someone else would know when they were encountering someone, if someone was a good referral for you, because, you know, too many people are really, really general or really um, even fuzzy, you know. It's like they're trying to be this big umbrella and no one can figure out what it is they do or where their expertise is. Right, right. And I see that happen so much, and that's why I just can't seem to stress it enough. And, you know, each week when if you have a networking function that you go to every week, you don't have to come back and ask for the same thing. You know, there's so many different opportunities, especially if you are in multi-level marketing and let's say you're in the health and wellness industry, you are going to be offering probably more than one product or okay. your product can help more than one type of individual so you can change that up. Um if you have a product that can not only help people that have diabetes or if it's good for people that need to lose weight, one week you might want to go in there and say, you know, a great referral for me would be somebody who is wanting to shed an extra 10 pounds or 15 pounds. So think of who you know who's been talking about going on a diet or you see them, uh, you know, they, they have their Weight Watchers paperwork, um, you know, they're looking at losing weight. I would love that, an introduction to that person. And the next yeah. week you could talk about the same product but say, think of who you know who's a diabetic. 
right. I need to talk to them because this product can really help. So there are ways that you can change it up and make it different if you're presenting to the same group of people. So you, there's different ways to make it interesting. You just have to kind of sit down and be a little creative with it. But that creativity will carry you a long way. It makes it interesting. And, again, you want to paint a picture that when you are talking, everybody in the room, they don't really have to think about who they know. Right. That they can, you know, it just automatically, oh, I have somebody. Yeah. You know, and you accomplish that by painting a picture. Yeah, boy, it's so it's such great advice because people, uh, you know, you have to help them help you, right? People don't think in generalities. And mm-hmm. so the more specific you are, and I love what you say about you don't have to ask for the same thing week after week. I was in a group where there was someone in the group who for a year, every week, every week we met, every week asked for the same exact thing. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's like, okay, really? I, I get that this is a target market, but for a whole year, and if no one has said that they know anyone, they don't know anyone. Or maybe you need to get specific, maybe more specific about the actual businesses within that target market that, you know, you, you would like to reach out to. But So I love this, you know, get creative, figure out the different target markets and the way your product helps them and, you know, ask for specifics and change it up a little bit. It's great. Wow. Okay. So hope everyone was listening to that because it really, really matters. So you network, and then you have to follow up. Mm-hmm. And not everybody does, <laughs> you know, and not everybody does well. So let's talk about when follow-up actually begins. When, when do you think the follow-up actually begins? At what point? Well, I feel follow-up for me. And I feel, you know, again, a lot of what I'm going to share today, Diane, and I I want to make sure that everybody understands this, I'm going to be sharing certain techniques that work for me and have always worked for me and that I have shared with other people. And sometimes, you know, you have to tweak it a little bit to fit you and what you're doing. But these are things, examples that I'm going to use are things that have actually happened to me or people in my network, um, you know, that I, again, I'm sharing this to, you know, to help everyone. So for me... Follow-up always begins after I go to a networking function, whether it's one of my own or if I attend a chamber event. What's going to happen is I, and I shared this a little bit, you know, again, it's it's something from networking that I do, but I always make sure that I get someone's business card. You know, there's always a lot of people that don't like to hand out the business card, and I always say get over that. Um, you know, if I get your business card, that's one of the things that I'm doing at a networking function is I'm taking some notes on the back because I do want to help you. Um, and, you know, of course, you know, if it's reciprocal, I would love to have somebody be able to come back and help me in the future. But yeah. by writing down on the back of their card what they're looking for, just like, for example, those four questions that we went through, mm-hmm. you know, making notes because – there is no possible way anybody can remember everything. And I I have been complimented several times. As a matter of fact, the other day I was complimented on, oh, my gosh, you have such a great memory. I didn't, you know, you remembered that I had a daughter and I moved back to Orlando because, you know. So, but you know how yeah. I know that? I wrote it down. <laughs> I was looking at my notes. So, I mean, that's, that's just something that it's, it's not that I've got a great memory. It's just I write everything down. I'm an obsessive note taker. So, for example, if I go to a networking function and I've met someone new, I have my notes with me, I immediately go back and I typically will write an email and just say, hey, it was great meeting you, you know, I look forward to, you know, talking with you soon. And if I promised them something, an introduction, or if I promised to uh, follow up with them, hey, let's meet for coffee or something like that, I'll put that in the email and say I'll be in touch with you soon about meeting up. So follow up to me, it begins right after you meet someone. Yeah, it's great. It's great. So, I love that. Yeah, and and again, you want to make sure, you know, because I'm sure there's a lot of people that are listening, myself included. I have met people at networking functions that will say, oh, Carrie, I'm going to give you a call. I have somebody I want you to talk to, and I never hear from them again. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll see them again at another networking function or, or somewhere else, or I'll run into them at the grocery Oh, my gosh, I'm supposed to get that information to you. I'm so sorry. I've just been so busy. I've been so slammed, this is going on, that's going on, the dog peed on the carpet, or, you know, there's always <laughs> something going on. And, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm a pretty laid back, I'm a pretty easygoing person, so I'm like, oh, okay. But for the most part, you never want to kind of set the tone. You know, your follow-up process, it really shows a lot about how you do business. Well, and that- I don't think people, 
Yeah, I don't think people realize quite the impact that that can have. Um, I have had people, and this is the true story, I had someone uh, recently who I really wanted to be able to refer business to this person. And I probably called them five or six times to say, hey, I, you know, because I wanted to get together with them one-on-one and talk with them about all the products that they offer and, you know, kind of offering it, you know, to align with them as a strategic partner. Well, not only did this person never call me back, it was the same thing I was just talking about where, okay, um, I'm seeing this person at the grocery store, I'm seeing them at the event, and they're always telling me how busy they are. Well, you know what, Diane, I'm really busy too. I run two companies. Um, I have a full personal life, and I still manage to call people back. Right. Um, so, you know, it just it really gave me a bad taste in my mouth, and I thought, sure. you know what, I don't think this is going to be the right person. And that person, I wound up partnering with someone else, and they lost out on a lot of business simply well, because it re- it they didn't call back. Well, it speaks to priorities. Exactly. It speaks to priorities. You can tell people don't realize that they're really saying what their priorities are, Mm-hmm. When they're and and what their level of professionalism is, when they're doing this kind of thing, and and you know, we're, as you said, we are all very busy. But you've given um, a, a, like a solution to being very busy. Write it down. Keep mm-hmm. the notes. Write it on the back of the card. Jot yourself a note. Keep track of things so that you don't lose them and you don't let go of them and you don't miss out on those opportunities. Absolutely. And nobody can, t- I had someone the other day that I spoke with and I just said, you know, oh, you know, we met, um, you know, at, at one of the chamber events here locally. And I said, you know, I just wanted to, to follow up with you. And, and they were like, oh, yeah, that would be great. Well, they mentioned to me they can't come to a networking function because they're going on vacation. So I wrote that down. It seems yeah. silly that I would, but I wrote it down. I said, oh, that's great. Where are you going? Puerto Rico. Oh, that's great. I hope you have a wonderful time. So when I do call this person again to see if they want to come to our next function, what do you think I'm going to ask her? How was your vacation? How was her trip? Yeah. And I can't tell you how much that resonates with other people, that you took the time that you remembered. You know, because they're thinking, wow, you've got – and I I do, I hear that a lot. You've got a great memory. And the truth be told, I have a terrible memory. (laughs) If it wasn't – if somebody wanted to really hurt me, they'd come into my house and they would steal all of my notes or go into the office and steal all of my notes because I'm lost without them. Um, You know, I really am. So – but it's because I write it down. Um, You know, and you really – and do I slip up too? Of course I do. I'm only human. We all are. But I think the important thing is is that, you know, when you do start the follow-up process – if you don't call someone back, if you tell them you're going to do something and you don't do it, definitely apologize. But right. I would I would recommend don't go into a lot of detail because, you know, it, it really isn't that important. And yep. honestly, nobody really wants to hear oh, it's because you're busy. You know, yep. to me, we're all busy. That's just not an excuse. Right, right. I'm with you. Okay. So from that, then let's talk about some of these effective follow-up processes because I think – This is part of the reason why, you know, I wanted to have you on the show because follow-up is so important. People don't do it well, and I think part of the reason is they really don't have a system, you know, that that works for them or they don't, you know, they don't have a process that they can just work. So what are some of these processes that you have found to be effective? Well, I have two things that are very effective. Um, As I, I think I talked a little bit last time on the show about, You know, I have, for example, when I'm meeting somebody um, or if somebody gave me someone else's information, I'm more of a visual person. I like things that I can touch and feel. So my system is very old school. I, I, you know, use the little fat books that you can get at the dollar store. So for those of you who are listening that don't really have a budget to invest in a customer relation management software such as Zoho or Salesforce or if you're, you know, wanting to pay to keep your your uh, prospects uh, on LinkedIn or Plaxo, this is something that everybody can do. That's very affordable. Um, what I do is I take the little fat books and I take the, you know, each page has a card stapled to it. Um, I'll give you a great example. Last week I went to uh, I wanted barbecue, so I went to Bono's Barbecue, and while I was waiting for my dinner. They had, uh, you know, there was a little section there where they had five or six people that had put their business cards out. So I'm looking through them, and I'm like, oh, you know, I, you know, we have a new group that's starting out here at the beach. And I thought, I'm going to call these people and ask them if they want to come. So, of course, I pull out my pen, and I write bonos on the back of it. 
And I came home and I put them in one of my notebooks and I called each one of them and said, you know, hey, I got your business card at Bono's and uh, out here at the beach and this is what I do. Would you like to come and join us? Now, that, in fact, once I put that person's card in the book and I staple it to the page, I'm writing notes. I'm putting, you know, 1113, left a voicemail, or LVM, or VM. I got their voicemail, but I didn't leave a message. Or I talk to them, they're going to come. I need to send them an email. So that kind of starts your follow-up process. Now, obviously, if you have something that's, um, if you have the money to invest in it, you know, there's there's several, or even Outlook. Outlook is a good thing to use as well. Some people like things that are computer-based, and that's just not me. Um, yeah. You know, I, I've been doing this for years and years, and I'm one of those people I'm a big fan of. If it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> so it works for me. Um, but there's probably a lot of people listening that they would prefer something online, you know, so you can put yeah. all of your contacts in online. But your next step is, is how do you keep following up with these people. Right. You know, um, one of the main things that I hear from a lot of salespeople, and it's really a fear issue, Diane, and I hear from them, well, you know, I really don't want to bug anybody. I don't <laughs> want to bother them. I've already called once. And, you know, again, it's sales. And you have to kind of get over it. You yeah. have to, and, and there's, if I wish I had a formula to get over the fear, and the only thing that I know to do is to tell people jump into the deep end of the pool, yeah. pick up the phone, and start dialing. And one thing I will share with you, because I do, I obviously keep very detailed records, and I keep track of, you know, how much I follow up. And a typical contact for me, and I can tell you it's not going to be much different for anybody else in a different industry, is, I'm probably reaching out to them anywhere from six to ten times before I actually get them on the phone. I spoke with a woman this morning that uh, the first time I, I met her, it was at a chamber event, and we exchanged business cards. I told her about what I did, and I've probably tried contacting her, I would say, if I went back and counted 20 times wow. in the past two years. Okay, I finally get her on the phone today. I have a question and for you about that. Yes. When you're doing that follow-up and you're calling them, are you leaving messages every time or are you leave, be, random about how often you leave messages? That's a great question. And actually, that was the next thing I was going to go over. Oh, For example, this particular woman, um, you know, I would leave a few messages. You know, obviously you have, if you're keeping records, you want to have the date, okay, yeah. like 11, like today's date is 11-12. So 11-12, uh, 12 um, left voicemail, so like LVM. And those are some good coding words, like NA would be not available uh, or they didn't answer, no answer. B for it rang busy. Uh, VM, if you got their voicemail, but you didn't leave a message. But if you did, you'd put LVM for left voicemail. Uh-huh. And again, these are, are uh, abbreviations that I, I use and, and work for me. And again, you're going to formulate those to how they would want you would want to work for right. you, because, you know, right. there are some people, they don't want to leave messages at all, and that's fine. I would recommend if you leave a voicemail message for somebody and you, you're calling them once a month, um, probably the next time you could go ahead and leave a message. Now, if you're calling them every week, I would definitely say no. Yeah. Uh, if you're calling them more than once in one month, I would say no. You know, leave them a voicemail once, try them again. If you get their voicemail, just hang up. Um, but you have to just keep trying. I will tell you, like I said, this particular person, it's taken 20, you know, me reaching out, dialing her number 20 times before I've gotten a hold of her. Um, Now, some people think, well, I don't want them to be mad at me. Well, I can tell you right now, 99% of the time, and I don't think I've ever had anybody yell at me for this, but 99% of the time when I do reach out to someone that has gotten my voicemails and my emails in the past, the first thing out of their mouth is, thank you so much for following up and, and keeping in touch with me. It's just been chaotic. I have yeah. this going on. This is, you know, or there's some changes internally. I appreciate you following up, and I hope I can attend one of the events soon. Or, you know, I, if I'm calling for one of my other companies, you know, whatever the case may be. So 90% of, 99% of the time, people are Thanks for reaching out for me. Thanks for, you know, not giving up on me. That's the response that I get. Now, you know, granted, you might be promoting a different product or service, but for the most part, if people aren't interested, at some point they are going to say to you, 
Look, I just don't think it's going to be, I don't see where this would fit into our organization. Right. This is not going to be a good fit. And at that point, I would mark the lead and I, not interested. Okay. Yeah. Now, once I do that, I don't throw those leads away. You know, I have a color coding system as well that I utilize that, you know, you can use electronically or you can use um, if you're doing it like me where you just have a little book. Um, so there is a color coding system because you never want to give up on even the leads that t tell you there's no interest. Okay? Yeah. But you definitely, I would say, when you're reaching out to people, if you're calling them more than once in a one-month time period, I would leave one message, but still try to call and see if you can get them on the phone. Yeah. Um, you know, nowadays, Diane, people are so busy, and we right. have so much going on, and we have so much coming at us because we're not just hearing about, you know, an event through me calling. They're hearing about events through Facebook, through Twitter, through LinkedIn, through their email, through their chamber, through the newsletter, through, you know, they're hearing it from everywhere. And, you know, and the same thing too with other products and services. So we have a lot of information thrown at us and it's just too much. Um, so obviously, you know, following up is that's why it's even more important now than it would have been five years ago. Yeah, that's a really, really good point. And, and I love this whole system. I mean, I think part of the reason why no one feels like you're bugging them is because you're not bugging them. You know, mm -hmm. when, when salespeople think, oh, I don't want to bug people, it's right because you're calling them every day or you're calling mm -hmm. them and leaving them messages once a week. That does bug them. But what you're talking about is still trying to reach them but leaving a message once a month and and keeping track of what you're doing, you know, really keeping – notes on all your activities so you know when you've mm -hmm. done something with them. And, again, I've never had anyone tell me, well, you know, you called me three times last month, you called me yeah. last week. Because, again, people are so busy. If somebody is actually keeping track of how many times you're calling <laughs> them, they need a new job. <laughs> they really do. That's a great point. Good for you. That's exactly right. Uh, but right. I've never had that happen, so knock on wood. But uh, you know, who knows? There's there's uh, <laughs> there's an opportunity for anything to happen. So that could happen at some point. But I, you know, that's what I do try to tell people who are in. They have that fear. They just they. It's like a gripping fear that they're yeah. bugging people. Well, you know, one of the things I tell people who who say you know they, they're feeling like they're becoming a pest and that you know they you know whatever it is, and I say to them, you know. If you really feel like that, at some point, you know, down the road, you can leave a message that says, I'm starting to feel like a stalker. You know, you can sort of joke about it and say, mm -hmm. I'm starting to feel like a stalker. I really don't, you know, want to be, you know, feeling like that. I know you're busy. I'm going to continue to keep trying to get a hold of you. If you'd rather that I didn't, please give me a call or shoot me over an email and let me know, no problem. Mm -hmm. Because then you give people permission to say no. Mm -hmm. But you also are letting them know you're going to keep trying to get a hold of them because you believe there's a connection, you know, or there's an opportunity for a connection. There's a reason to be talking. And I and think, you, you know, you yeah. can get an open conversation with somebody that way. Yeah, and that is that is a, a great way, too, to kind of, you know, take the uh, – you know the the heavy lifting off of you know take it off of them and put it on you right um you know that is a great way to do it but like i said just to you know i've made oh my gosh i probably make an average of 15 to 20,000 calls a year now wow. granted i you know we for part of our business that is what we do um you know we have a service called knockout marketing so that is a big part of what we do but i can probably i can still count on one hand how many people have actually been downright rude to me or, or mean? And, you know, I, I still have a few fingers left. You know, it just, it really, honestly, you know, for the most part, people are going to tell you, hey, look, this is just not going to be a good fit for us. It just, right. I don't see where it's going to fit into the organization. And I think that's pretty much the end of it. I don't think that people are really so much afraid of telling you no. It's just, they would love to work with you, but they just don't see a good fit. Right. And that's something, too, when people feel like, you know, oh, I feel like I'm bugging somebody. Well, you know, again, you're offering a great product or service. You have yeah. something of value to offer to them. So, you know, you're also kind of, you know, uh, making it a little bit harder for on yourself to sell because if you feel like you're bugging them, you're, you're offering something that can save them money, save them time, or would be a good investment for them. So, in essence, you're really not bugging them. You're trying right. to help them. 
So, um, hang on a second, I'm writing myself a note. Uh, I need to take a quick uh, sponsor break and remind everyone that today's show is sponsored by Vision 21. Vision 21 provides small business owners with the tools and resources they need to grow their businesses. You can visit www.vision21.org to learn more, and 21 is spelled out. It's not the numbers. Also, if you'd like to participate in today's conversation and you're in the chat room, you can type something in and I will share it with our guest. If you're on the phone, you can press 1 and that will let me know you have something to share. Our guest today is Carrie Heaps of Carrie's Network, and we're talking about follow-up techniques that make sense. And, Carrie, the question that I had for you is, do you have different techniques for when you're following up with prospects as opposed to following up with um, uh, people you network or, you know, like referral sources or potential strategic partners, or you treat them all the same? Well, in essence, I still treat them all the same. Um, For example, and when I say I treat them all the same, there's two different ways. I'm going to offer them the same level of service that I would if, you know, if they were referred to me as I would if I cold call. Um, You know, we we do pride ourselves in trying to make sure that we give the best customer service that we can to people and also be honest. You know, if we can't help somebody, I'd rather have you as a happy uh, contact than an unhappy client. Yeah. Um, but in the same way as, you know, how I handle, you know, when I'm looking, you know, when I'm, I'm building up, you know, for example, if I staple somebody's card, I had someone that was referred to me and I spoke with them prior to getting on this uh, phone call. And that was one of the things that I told this person, you know, I did write down the, who they were referred by. And but I still went through the exact same process. I made notes that I, you know, talked with her today, that I sent her an email. Um, you know, and I'll continue to do the same follow up. So I just the only thing that really changes, Diane, is I do put down that they were referred by someone. Um, but I don't really you know, I think people too think that if somebody's referred that they're going to be a fast track client. Yeah. And that that isn't always the case. Right. You know, um, not just for myself, but for anybody. Um, it's always great to receive referrals, but you still, you know, again, you're still going to have to follow up. Um, you know, I, I just, it amazes me how much business is left on the table that I see constantly that I just, I, because I can't force people to dial the phone. I can't come over to somebody's office and say, you pick up the phone and call this person right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. Um, you know, you have to want to do it. And again, it, it really it goes back to the fear that they have that they're yeah. they're bugging someone. So thank you so much for that. That was you know exactly why I asked the question because I agree with you. I think people think when they get a referral um, that it's like in the bag, and so for mm-hmm. some reason they don't do the same level of of work. It, it, it's sort of weird. Now, um, when you're networking and you're meeting people who now this may be different for you you may see everyone as a potential for because of your different businesses but for those people who are networking and you know not everyone they're meeting is a potential client but everyone mm-hmm. they're meeting uh, but they're you know they're meeting people who um they feel some sort of synergy with and they want to start building that referral ne- you know relationship with or that you know networking relationship with um same process as the others, or, you know, I mean, same with stapling their business card to a piece of paper and keeping track of the notes and having a system for outreach? Well, yeah, again, that is what I do. You know, I am very old school in in how I do this. It's very, you know, staples and paper um, and writing with a pencil. But like I said, a lot of people, you know, they do want to use the latest technology. Um, But, again, if you're doing that, if you're using Outlook, you know, put in the notes section. Um, If you're using Zoho, um, you know, put in, you know, when you reached out to that person, you made a phone call and what was said, and it it time stamps it for you. You still want to do the same level of follow-up. You know, how you received that, that potential business or how you came across that person it might be different, but your level of follow-up still needs to be the same. Okay. Um, you know, there's a lot of people, I spoke with someone today who I was very honest. I said, you know, coming to the networking event, she wants to meet CFOs. Don't really have that many CFOs that come to my networking events. As, as a matter of fact, there's very few events I've gone to where I have met a CFO. Yeah. I've maybe met one or two. And I offered the same advice. I said, you know, this may not be the best fit for you. Here's my suggestion. You know, yeah. And I did tell her if she's going to go 
to networking functions, she needs to ask for an introduction to, you know, their company's controller or their company's CFO because right. that's who she needs to get in front of. But, again, if somebody does refer that to her, I would tell her the same thing. Make sure that you make notes who she was, you know, who this person was referred by. Um, when you contacted them, did you leave them a message? Um, did you get their voicemail? And just, you know, just put VM. This way yeah. you can kind of, and these are great tracking tools too, Diane, because again, you know, you want to be able to make sure that you're keeping track of your prospects. And just because you've contacted them, 20, most people would give up after 20 times and just be like, oh, I'm not going to call that person again. Right. Well, you never know. You could call that person and. They're like, oh, my gosh, yeah, I need some help right now. It's, it's ironic that you called, and, right. you know, there's your next customer. Um, you never want to, uh, you know, give up on an actual prospect until, you know, they hang up on you, so to speak. All right, that you, was going to be my question. Yeah. Is there a point at which you give up? Because I'm asked that question all the time. And, you know, who knows? I mean, you, you know, so you're saying no, you don't. You just no. keep sticking them in that tickler and, okay. And here's and this is why I say that. I would say to you, give up on a prospect when you call them and they say, oh, my gosh, I'm so sick of hearing from you. Don't ever call me again, and they <laughs> hang up. At that point, you're probably going to want to give up on them. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to share with your audience is that, you know, when you do have somebody that tells you there is no interest, you have a, a lead that you have marked as no interest, okay, mm-hmm. I would still hold on to those leads. What I specifically do with them and I'm going to go into my color coding system in a minute, so this will make okay. a little bit more sense. But okay. with the, the leads that tell me that there aren't, you know, there's just no interest, I don't see how this is going to work. What I usually do is typically about six months to a year. I will pull those leads out, and I color code them in a red color. But that's just me. I, I want to use red because that means stop, don't call them. Okay. And what I do is I will call that particular company, and, you know, I'll, I'll get the receptionist and I'll say, oh, you know, um, this is Carrie calling with Carrie's Network. I was just curious, um, is uh, Jim Smith available? And, you know, she's like, oh, uh, yeah, hold just one moment. So if she transfers me over, I will typically, you know, while she's transferring me, I'll hang up. Okay. Because I want to know if Jim is still there. Jim told me he's not interested. Now, if I call into the same company and I say, oh, can I, this is Carrie from Carrie's Network, is Jim Smith available? Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Heaps, uh, Mr. Smith is uh, no longer with us. He left the company three months ago. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because yeah. at this point, guess what? Oh, I, I didn't know that. Um, you know, has someone taken his place? Is someone, you know, in charge of the marketing? Yeah, that's Susie Smith. Okay, great. Yeah. Could you transfer me over to Susie? All of a sudden, now this company is a brand new lead for me because I exactly. have a new person to talk to and to pitch yeah. this to. And just yeah. because Jim told me no and didn't see, you know, that this was going to be a good fit, Susie might talk to me and it could be a completely different story. Right. Now, I would recommend in this day and time, I try to do this every six months because I will be honest with you. The way the economy has been yeah. going, I see a lot of people. I have literally, Diane, called into a company, spoken with a prospect, sent over uh, a proposal, and a month later, that person's no longer there. Yep. So, and because of downsizing reasons, or somebody else now has that job, or someone else has those job duties, I have a new person that I can market to. So, even the people who have told me that they're not interested, I still keep those leads because, and, and that has turned into business for me. Yep, yep. It's a great, great point. That That is really, thanks, thanks for sharing that. I think that is really great. Now I have a question for you. If This may sound like a weird question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. When someone, you know, you finally get a hold of someone and they say, no, thank you, it's really not a road we want to go down, you know, blah, 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 blah. So you're putting an I on their record. Mm-hmm. Um, are you – sending them anything to, you know, thank them for letting you know? Are you doing any sort of? No, no. Okay. The only thing I would tell someone to do, and, and it depends on how, you know, when you're talking to them, if they seem agitated or irritated, just say, oh, you know, thank you so much for letting me know. You have a great day. Okay. Now, if they're telling me, you know, Carrie, we just don't see any way that this is going to fit with us. This isn't something that we could use. Okay, I understand. You know, I appreciate your time. Let me ask you this. Would it be okay if I followed up with you sometime next year just to see Got if your it. plan changes? Good. Would that be okay? Okay. 
But I would only do that if they're, you know, if if they sound agitated or if they're not, you know, they're just like, look, this just isn't a good fit for me. If they're being short with you, just say, I really appreciate your time. You have a great day. Okay. And, you know, mark them not interested. And, you know, again, keep them in that that file system to call back in six months. Yeah. See if that person's still there. You'd be surprised how many people, um, you know, anymore are shuffling around or, or they're being let go and the duties that they had are being reassigned to other people in the company. Yeah. So it gives you the opportunity to pitch what you're doing to the same company but to a different prospect. Great. It is great. Um, you know, which kind of brings me to my other point, Diane, which was the color yeah. coding, if I yeah, can share yeah. that. Okay. Absolutely. Um, you know, some of the best ways, you know, again, you, you've got to keep track of your prospects. And, again, I do this more paper and pencil type person. You know, again, some people are going to be doing this in Outlook or Zoho or Salesforce. You know, again, and you're, you're making notes. Instead of writing them, you're typing them, and you're, you're saving those in the system. Um, another thing that I do, I kind of take it a step further. I do color code um, a lot of my leads. Now, I have a lot of leads as well, um, lead list that I've gotten. Uh, that are in Excel. Okay. And I'll do the same thing with my leads in Excel, and I also do the same thing with my leads that I put in uh, that are business cards that I staple to these, you know, little pages in my fat book. Um, you can go down to the dollar store, pay a dollar to get a package of highlighters. Um, you know, same thing if you are in Excel on the, uh, you know, and you're working in Excel and you have leads in there, um, you know, which you can do on the formatting toolbar. There's a fill option to fill color. Mm-hmm. So what I do is I use the what they taught us in kindergarten, you know, red, yellow, go, you know, you know, for the traffic light, red means yeah. stop. Okay, so, for example, again, people are going to do this how they want to do it and how it's going to be better for them, but this is what I do. The leads that I mark that are not interested, I'll take my little red highlighter and I'll just – you know, or fuchsia, whatever you want to call it, and just kind of put a little mark on the page. So that way okay. I know when I'm flipping through those leads, I'm not going to stop on that page because that's okay. somebody that told me they weren't interested. Okay? okay. Same thing if I'm in Excel. If I have somebody that tells me, look, this is just not going to be a good fit for us, well, I highlight their cell, you know, the cells that all of their information's in, and I click on the fill color, and I choose the red color. Okay. Okay, so that even though I did mark it NI, it's just a great way to catch your eye as you're because you're going to be yeah. working your list periodically, or at least you should be, you know, going in there every day looking at them. So that way you know, with me, when I see it's, it's marked red, I'm not even going to go to that. Now, if I have somebody that tells me, you know, gosh, Carrie, I would love to do this, but um, we're not going to do it this year. Okay, great. Can we call you back next year? Absolutely. That I would mark in orange. Okay. Now, somebody else might want to use a different color, like purple yeah. or yellow. Use what you want, but this is typically what I will use. And then I'll just put in the notes section, you know, to call back. I spoke to them, and this is what they said, and call them back next year. So the next one that I use is somebody tells me, well, can you email me some information? I just, I just want to look at the information first before I commit to anything. Sure thing. So I'll put that in the notes field. And I will highlight that page and, you know, just take the yellow highlighter and just, you know, do a a little dash across the the piece of paper. Or, you know, if I'm in Excel, I'm going to highlight those cells and color them yellow. Um, Now, if somebody tells me that they want to set an appointment, they're interested in buying, um, you know, we need to go to the next step, I use green. And the reason I use green is because I affiliate that with money. So... (laughs) I'm going to highlight those cells, and I'm going to fill the color with green or take my green highlighter and just do the same thing. So this way, again, when you are going through the next day, you have to, you want to call the same lead list. Well, you know, well, obviously the green, that's done. Um, you're not going to recall the ones that are in red. Um, the ones that are in yellow, those are going to be the ones that you would want to go to next because you want to follow up with them, make sure that they got your email, Um and then the orange ones, you know, what I usually do is once at the beginning of the month, I'll go back through and see, okay, which ones do I need to call? And I just look at the ones that are marked in orange. Um, okay. And I just, if it says that I need to call them this month, then I make a note to, you know, pick up the telephone and call them. Um, now, I can tell you, I think with a lot of the um, CRM systems that are out there, you know, if you are you wanting to use something like Zoho, I don't know that there's many color coding options. 
Animal but it just it does make it a lot easier yeah, if you are like you know a, if you have a boss that is giving you lead list you know each week and you you know you've got all these different lead lists it's just easy to go in there and go okay you know I I know who I can call to you know who are my prospective people that I can call today and who I need to follow up with and who's yeah. the current client and you know again marking the ones that are not interested marking those in red because again six months from now you want to call into that company see if See if Joe is still there. See if Kimberly right. is still there. And if they're not, great. You know, you can unhighlight that, you know, and, and not make it red and, and put in the new person's information, and that could turn into a great client for you. Right. Wow, that that is uh, that is great. I like that a lot. I'm going to have to figure out how to incorporate that. I like that because it's visual, you know. I mean, it's really it's that instant look because I think that's part of the problem with follow-up programs is like they get really cumbersome or complicated or people aren't really even sure where mm-hmm. to start, you know, so it, it just doesn't have stickiness, you know, it's just mm-hmm. it's something they really can't get behind, but but that's quite a structure, I mean, that's, I like Well, that. it does, like I said, it does make it easier, and, you know, again, you want to, you don't just want to call a list one time, you know, you want, you have to just, you got to keep working it. Yeah. And, you know, again, if you don't mark these, the reason I started using the colors is because in Excel, you know, I couldn't see in the notes field sometimes what they had put down. So sometimes I would dial that person's number and have to hang up immediately. Oh, I've already talked to this person. Right. So it just made things a lot easier to color yeah. code. Yeah, it's really great. Now, let me ask you a question about social media and the mm-hmm. role that it plays in follow-up. If it plays one. What, what do you think it is? Where does it fit in the well, follow-up process? Well, social media, if you ask me, I would tell you, do I think do I think it counts in the follow-up process? My answer, for me personally, I would tell you no. Okay. Uh, you're going to talk to other people out there who are in the social media industry that will tell you, oh, absolutely, it, it definitely counts. And the reason I would say that is, again, going back to what we talked about before, Diane, there's so many people who – um, use, you know, they're, they're not, they're following up or, or they use social media. There's so many things that are being thrown at us. And social media is a new thing that's being yeah. thrown at everyone. You know, yeah. I mean, think about it. You log into Facebook, you know, typically if I log in three or four times a day, I've got, you know, sometimes 20, 30 updates that I'm looking at. I have about four or five people that have invited me to events that day. So it's just, again, another form of throwing things at you. Um, you know, we typically will put our events on Facebook. And even today, I called the people who told me that marked that they were going. I picked up the telephone and I called them. And the reason I did that is because nine times out of ten, if I don't call them, they don't show up. They just, they're just marking, oh, yeah, I'll go to that. <laughs> and they're not really putting it on their calendar. So I think with social media, it, I think it does help to, again, you know, just touch that person one more time. Um, do I think it's going to make a huge difference in your follow-up process? No, because I've never had anyone say to me, oh, my gosh, thank you so much for calling me. Yeah, I've been meaning to do business with you because you connected with me on LinkedIn. I've never had anyone say that to me, yeah. and I don't think I ever will. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I asked the question. <laughs> But again, I think I, it's all going to be in who you ask. I think you know, if yeah. you ask someone else, they would probably tell you, "Oh, yes, absolutely." But you know, even the people I called today, they were kind of like, they were like, "Yeah, I did RSVP to that." And it was almost like they just, you know, yeah. it was. Had I not called, I don't. You know, and we'll see. We'll see how many of them show up by me, you know, contacting them through the telephone as well. So, um, I still think you can't. You know, the telephone is a awesome tool, always has been, always will be, and I don't think that there's ever going to be a replacement for it. I think there will be things that we can do in addition to it to connect with people, but, you know, do I think that there's anything more powerful? No. I, I'm so with you, and I'm so glad, and that, that really is why I asked the question, because what you're really talking about is, the relationship part of the of sales and prospecting and networking and you know all of these things that we're talking about and follow up is, is a personal um, behavior you know it's mm-hmm. a connected activity and too many people take the easy way because they're busy and because they have a lot going on they think they can cover a, you know a wide berth you know with, with using some of these things but it doesn't have the same impact so you know when we talk about effective methods. 
you know, it's just not as effective as that personal, you know, that outreach, that calling, the, you know, sending over, uh, writing a handwritten note, you know, sending an email that says, uh, you know, just thanks so much for meeting, really Mm -hmm. enjoyed it. I'll be, you know, contacting you about coffee. I mean, just, you know, it's that personal touch that really ends up making all the difference in the world because it's people doing business with people. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's why I said I can't stress enough with people to, you know, keep detailed notes. Yeah. And and I see people, I, I even express that at, at our networking functions, you know, we tell people, you know, I have everybody exchange business cards. And the reason I do that is because when you stand up and it's your spotlight and you're talking, everybody else should be writing on the back of your business card what it is that you're looking for, you yeah. know, what your needs are, you know, whatever it is that you're sharing. And they should be extending the same courtesy to you because if you don't write it down, you will never remember. Never. It's a really great it's, point. It's not going to happen. Yeah, that's a really great point. So um, how, how for people who follow up is, is not something they've gotten down, is there a way for them to start building that muscle, you know, start building that habit? I mean, I know, you know, the easy answer is, yeah, you just got to try it every day. But, I mean, is there some sort of a trick or key to making sure that you're, you know, creating a good habit? Well, I think there's a couple of things that people can do. First and foremost, it's, you know, going back to that fear that people have. And if I could paint a visual in people's heads, you know, when I do have people that come to us for help, you know, they talk about, oh, I just don't want to be bugging anybody. And, and you know, and when it comes down to it, just getting on the telephone you know, if I could paint a visual in your head how fearful they are, it's almost like they're going to pick up that telephone, the phone's going to ring, and something like Jaws is going to come out of the receiver (laughs) and bite their ear off, and they're going to have to go to the hospital. I mean, really, I mean, it is just that paralyzing. That's how paralyzing their fear is. And, again, I think going back to how you can kind of get over that feeling so you can start out doing this is, you know, you're not bugging people. You have to sit down and look at your product and your service that you're offering. If you believe in it, then you should have no problem doing follow-up calls or or doing cold calling because you are offering them something that's going to, again, you know, it could be that that's saving them time, helping them get new clients, um, you know, uh, getting them to meet new people, or, uh, you know, you're going to be saving them a lot of money. Yeah. You have to really believe in what you're doing. And, and, you know, for the people who are saying, gosh, I don't want to bug anybody, I would say take a step back and look at your product because there's, for some reason, if you feel like this is going to bug that person by calling yeah. them and saying, hey, look, this can help you, yeah. then there might be a little bit of a belief issue in what you're selling. And that's, again, that will hinder you more, even not just in the follow-up process, but in just in sales in general. Right. So you've really got to believe in what you're doing and just know you're you're helping them. You yeah. know, and either they're going to want to take advantage of it or they're not. So, you know, getting over that fear would be first and foremost. Um, and then, too, getting into good habits. They say, well, it takes like 30 days to set yeah. up a new habit. Well, you know, for a lot of people, your goal should be, um, and it sounds like a lot, 100 phone calls a day. And that should be a combination of follow-up calls, um, calling new customers, you know, getting a new lead list and just breaking new ground. Because, again, it takes a while, you know, sometimes it could take eight or nine times of reaching out to somebody before you even get them on the phone. Or it might take ten times before they agree to meet with you. And this could happen in six months. It could happen in two years. Um, You know, I've had clients that have uh, come to fruition in six months, and I've had a few that it's taken a couple of years to procure. Right. But it was well worth it. So yeah. you can't just give up, you know, and, and I think that's another part of it, too. You don't want to ever, you know, you had asked me before about when would you give up on a prospect, and, and my answer has always been when they hang up on you. You know, at that yeah. point, you don't want to call them anymore. But, you know, everybody is still a prospect, and don't think because they haven't called you back or you haven't heard from them that it's because they, they're avoiding you. Like I said, nine times out of ten, people are so busy if you did call and leave them a voicemail and they wrote it down, they probably got busy doing something else and they forgot about it. And, you know, that's just how it is. We just have information being thrown at us in all different directions. So you can't always assume it's because they think you're annoying and they don't want to talk to you. Because well, that's that, usually not the case. Right. And that speaks to 
uh, changing the script that you, you know, the tape that you play in your head, mm-hmm. right? And that's really right. what you're saying is you have to know that there's value. You have to know that you're, you, you possibly have a solution for something that they're going through, that it's mm-hmm. not bothering someone, that it's, you know, it's a connectivity kind of thing. And if you can change that tape that you play, it makes mm-hmm. it easier to engage. You know, it makes it easier to, to go ahead and pick up the phone. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I would say, you know, just challenge yourself. Just carve out a little bit of time and say, I'm doing this during this time, and I'm not getting up from this chair till I'm done. So, you know, it, it's it's sort of a – I mean, I've heard people say make a game out of it. You know, just, you know, do something that's going to make it fun so that it's it's not the worst thing in the world and it's something that you actually will engage in doing. One good thing that you can do, like I said, if you you know if you do have a goal, make a hundred phone calls a day. And I have heard this from so many salespeople, because they'll ask me, well, how many phone calls do you make a day? And I'm like, a hundred. I that's my goal to make a hundred phone calls a day, whether it's for a client or it's for me personally or or whoever. Um, but that is our our goal is to do a hundred phone calls a day, and usually we exceed that. Um, but for the most part. You know, if you you have to carve out those hours, like from eight yeah. to twelve, and like you said, yeah. sit down and and just stay on the phone, and keep track of your calls. You know, um, is another good way to do it, just by doing just the the little tick marks. Um, you know, that you want to do a hundred phone calls. There's a great book out there, and I know I've, I've talked about it before, but it's called Go for No um, by Andrea Waltz and Richard Fenton. They've been on my radio show before, and they kind of you know the premise behind their book is. See how many no's you can get because right. if you get so many no's, you're going to get a yes. Yeah. So if you know that for every ten no's you get, you get a yes, then you know you want to set a no goal for yourself too. I want to talk. To, I, I want twenty people to say no to me today. And yeah. you would be surprised when you're on the phone that when you're pitching to somebody, you're you're uh, ironically, it's like you're saying in your head, "Say no to me," just so I can help reach. I need somebody else to say no, and that person's going to turn around and say yes. So it really does change the way that you look at the world, right. you know, about how right. you perceive it. So that is yeah. a great book for people to pick up, too. Yeah, yeah. Callie Graham says the same thing. He says um, he, when he goes into work with sales teams, he says, you can't stop calling till you get ten no's in a row. So mm-hmm. it's the same thing. They're going, oh, I can do that easily, right? But they can't mm-hmm. do it easily. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> but, it's, you know, they think they can. They think they're going to be done, you know, in a minute. And right. and it turns into a game, and it's fun, and, you know, then you're really actually enjoying the process. And then, like you said, the, the word takes on a different meaning, that no that, word takes on a different well, meaning. You know, again, and I've had people in other industries, you know, tell me, well, you know, oh, well, gosh, if you're making 100 phone calls a day, if you did that in my industry, you would be a multimillionaire. So I turn around and I always look at these people and say, well, if that's the case, then I guess it yeah. should be too hard for you to make 100 phone calls a day. Right. Then why aren't you, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's all in how you look at it. Oh, it's really great. Well, I, I just want to thank you so much for being on the show today. This is really, really great. I learned a lot. I'm going to the dollar store and getting myself a fat book or two. And <laughs> and seriously, because, you know, it's that whole I'm a paper person too, and I think that's been part of my problem is, that I, I know I should be embracing technology, and frankly, I can't. So, yeah. you know, it's just it's I'm more old school, so um, loving this, I think, you know, and it's just really, really great feedback. Would you please share with uh, our audience how they can get in touch with you and what you've got going on, That um, and I'll type it into the chat room as you share. Absolutely. Well, I do know on the show page you you have up there as well, Diane, and I appreciate you doing that where they can click on the the name Carrie's Network, and that takes them directly to our website so they can kind of look around a little bit. Uh, We are membership-based. You don't have to be local here in Florida to join our organization. We've got plenty of benefits uh, that can benefit anyone, um, you know, just not even by being here locally. Uh, one of our newest additions that we have for our premium membership that I wanted to share, and it's going so well, is that we've added a media directory. You know, for those of you who are looking to get yourselves booked on different radio programs or you want to be a contributing writer for certain publications, our media directory um, is available to our premium members where they can just log in. Diane is, is uh, one of the people who put her information in there as well you know, where you can find shows based on, you know, just business or health and wellness and do a quick search and it'll tell you what shows are available 
what the show host is looking for, if they want a press release, a bio, five to ten sample questions. It tells you everything that you're going to need uh, to be a potential guest on the show, and then you just click on their email and submit all the information that they're requesting. Um, so it's a great way to, you know, get your information out there to start getting yourselves booked on different radio programs and also, too, to, you know, get your information out there if you're wanting to uh, become a contributing writer as well. It's just a great way for, you know, those of you who are looking to build up the press section of your website and yeah. uh, get exposure for your book, CD, speaking program, whatever. Great, 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 great. Thank you so very much for for being with us. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time today, and I want to thank everyone um, who is listening in uh, now and in the future for taking some time. And I'd like to thank our sponsor, Vision 21. Please visit www.vision21.org or give a call to 216-712-4244. You don't have to be in the Cleveland area to take advantage of some of the services that they offer, including the virtual assistant services, which are um, a huge benefit. Our next show will be on November 16th when Lisa Ryan will be my guest. She's going to be talking with us about incorporating gratitude into your business and how it can really help uh, propel your business to another level. She is uh, quite the expert on the subject, and I think you'll find it Uh, really valuable information um, for you and your business and for your clients and and all of your contacts. As always, if you know someone who you think would be a good guest for the show or if you have a topic that you'd like us to cover, uh, please let me know. We are building out the show schedule for 2013 and are always looking for great guests like Carrie. So you've, you've heard her. You've heard some of the other guests. You know who we get and what we like, um, you know, who would be good please pass them on through the show page or through my website. Thank you all very much again, and have a wonderful couple of weeks. Uh, For those of you in the States, we'll be together again after Thanksgiving, so I would like to take this opportunity to wish everyone uh, a safe and happy Thanksgiving week, whether you celebrate Thanksgiving or not. Uh, Hug your family. Give some uh, thanks to the good people and the good fortune that you have in your life. And we'll be talking again on November 26th. Hey, friends, this is Jim Knight, former 21-year Hard Rock executive turned best-selling author and top 10 keynote speaker. And I'm Brant Menzwar, former frontman of Hollywood's most dangerous band turned top 10 motivational speaker and best-selling author. We host the how-to podcast, Thoughts That Rock, where we talk to rock stars, athletes, CEOs, astronauts, and even next-door neighbors who share their expertise and opinions. Together, we tackle the most interesting and challenging topics of today. Whether you want to learn how to become more confident, how to deal with anxiety at work, or how to write a hit song, or use Brazilian jiu-jitsu in life, we've got hundreds of episodes to help amp up your life and move you forward. Subscribe to Thoughts That Rock wherever you listen to podcasts, and check out evergreenpodcast.com for more information.